chance we have in the evening to focus on very ordinary things, the parts of the body, food, clothing, shelter, medicine, the fact that we're going to get sick, grow old, die, all very basic stuff. Nothing about emptiness, nothing about interconnectedness. No big abstractions, just concrete details. There's a purpose in that just to remind us that if we want to understand our minds, we have to strip things down to the basic details, keep things as simple as possible. The meditation itself is simplicity itself. Just stay with your breath. Come next week, your Dharma talk will be about staying with your breath. Be right with what's present in front of you, and don't let things get complicated. That's something we're very good at. We get things very complicated in our minds. That's one of the meanings of Babancha. We can add all kinds of details and all kinds of ins and outs to our thinking. But that takes us further and further away from the real issue is, what are we doing right now that's causing suffering? And learning how to look right at our own actions. So you have to strip things down, make things as simple as possible. This is one of the reasons the Ajans go into the forest, go off to be on their own strip away as many issues as they can, and just be confronted by the basic facts of life, the basic facts of survival. You're going to live in the forest. You have to have food, clothing, shelter, very basic, minimal stuff. It's possible that you're going to get sick, so you're going to need medicine. And what do you do when those things are hard to gain, hard to get? What throws you back on your own mind? Of course, if going into the forest were required for awakening, we shouldn't be here. We should be off someplace else. But it turns out that a lot of the Ajans, many of the ones that you don't hear about, actually gain their awakening experiences in monasteries. So it's not necessary that you strip everything down outside, but you do have to learn how to strip things down in your own mind. And this is the trick of living in a monastery, living in a community like this not getting all tied up in knots, learning how to keep things basic, keep things simple in your own mind at least. There may be other issues going on outside. There always seems to be a work project of some kind, and there's the constant work of the kitchen. But compared to the world out there, this is all pretty simple. Of course, we can make it as elaborate as we want in our minds, but that's against the purpose. The purpose is to keep things simple, keep things basic. And the more you can strip away the issues of the day. When you sit and close your eyes, you want to have all those things just go away. Remind yourself it's just you sitting here with a breath. Awareness with breath. Get the narrative of you out of the way as much as possible. No, you don't want the narrative to be building up in, course of the, in the course of the day. You want to be able to learn how to disentangle things as they start entangling themselves. So there's not a lot of disentangling you have to do when you sit down. A comment comes by, remember the Buddha's instructions, a sound has made contact at the ear. You can note whether it's pleasant or unpleasant, but if you can leave it just at that, then there are very few issues. And the fewer issues that you create around things outside, then the fewer issues there are to clutter up your mind as you sit down. So it is possible to gain awakening in a monastery. We don't have to go out and live alone. But it requires a talent, the talent of stripping things down, taking things apart in the mind, so that it can be as simple as possible. This is one of the reasons why we bring the mind to concentration in order to gain insight. 
because you're focused on very simple things here in the present moment. Breath. Awareness. And you'll find out that there are layers to the breath and there are layers to the awareness. And as the Buddha said, you notice when there's an element of fabrication, as he calls it, which is the element in which you add your intentions to things and create a specific experience out of, say, the simple fact that you're sitting here watching the breath. There's some bodily fabrication, which is the breath itself. There's some mental fabrication. There's a little bit of discussion. Excuse me, that's verbal fabrication. There's mental fabrication is the, or the, the feelings and the perceptions, the labels you put on things. Those are all here. But they're all here around something really simple. And it's when you keep things simple that you see things that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. You can start taking the layers apart as soon as you see that you are adding some intentional element to what you're doing right here right now. You can ask yourself, am I adding it in a way that's calming or am I adding it in a way that's stirring things up? How can I do it in a way that's calming? And you begin to see that some of the activities of the mind around the breath are unnecessary to keep it still, so you drop those. Some layers of the breath seem coarse and crude, so you drop those, allow the breath to calm down. Then as things grow calm, you can see the basic elements a lot more clearly. There's an intention here, and you have the act of attention. And there are perceptions. All these things that we use to create huge stories. Now they're centered around one thing. And when they're centered around one thing, that's when you can see them clearly. My first year as a monk, I remember at the beginning of the Rains Retreat, had a lot of the young monks coming in for just a three month ordination. And here they were at a forest monastery, and yet their parents had bought them cheap robes down at the store. And the cheap robes were Fanta Orange. And so the first thing the young monks did was, as soon as they got ordained, was to go down to the dyeing shed and dye their robes. And for a couple of weeks, that was all anybody could talk about. What mixture of red or orange with a little bit of green? how much brown you wanted to add, what was the way to get the best color for these robes. And some people were not satisfied with what they got, and they go back and dye them again. And you could see how people could take something very simple like that and make it a big issue. The more it was focused on one thing, the more clearly you could see how much people were adding to the problem. Fortunately, when I was ordained, I didn't have orange fan or fan of orange robes. I had already well dyed robes. I didn't have to get involved in the process. But watching them made me think about an experiment I had read about years before. They'd taken a male pigeon, put it in a box with a female pigeon, and clocked it to see how long it would take to begin its mating dance. Then they took the female pigeon out and they put a male pigeon in, and clocked the first male pigeon to see how long it would take it to mate. And sure enough, it began to do its mating dance with the male. It took a little bit longer, but it would do it. Then they took the male pigeon out and they put a decoy in. This time it took a little bit longer, but then again he started doing his mating dance. And then they got objects that were less and less and less like pigeons, until they had a red ball. And again, it would take a little bit longer, but he ended up doing his mating dance. Then finally they took everything out of the box, so the pigeon was just there in the box alone to see what it would do. And eventually it started focusing on one of the corners of the box. It started doing its mating dance to the corner. And what that showed, of course, is that a lot of our activity has very little to do with what's actually there outside. And a lot of it has to do with what we are fabricating from in within. And the more simple that you can make the outside, the more you can see what's going on inside. And see how much 
is actually being added from inside. And if you can start stripping it away, seeing this is ridiculous, focusing on the corner of a box. This is where we're different from pigeons. The pigeon couldn't reflect on itself, but we can reflect on ourselves to see where we're adding a lot of unnecessary drama, unnecessary complexity to our lives. We can start unraveling it. In the beginning, it's like unraveling a big, tangled mass of string or mass of yarn. It takes a lot of patience to pull out just one little strand. But as you keep pulling out the strands, pulling them out, pulling them out, pulling them out, the whole thing starts getting a lot more simple. And you can see the act of intention very clearly in the mind. Because all too often in our normal way of living, our knowledge of our intentions is kind of third hand or fourth hand. Something has made the decision inside, and we seem to know about it only later. But as you strip down the various layers of perception and inner conversation in the mind, and get the various layers of breath energy, calm down, calm down, then you get more in touch with what is actually making the choice in the mind. What act is doing this? Where is it? What does it say? And as you get closer and closer to the real thing, you begin to realize that the basic messages are very, very simple. It's when they get sent up through the bureaucracy that they get elaborated. But it's all very simple. What's next? What's next? Where are you going to focus your attention now? And then what are you going to do with it? And when you actually see the intention or the act of attention in, in action, that's when you can start asking, is there something else? Is there another way of doing this instead of making these idiotic comments all the time? Is there a state of mind that doesn't have to be disturbed by them? Can you stop them or allow them to stop? And if you hit the right spot, okay, everything begins to unravel. So do your best to keep things as simple as possible. Strip things down as much as you can, even as you're sitting here meditating. Your narrative of how an hour of meditation should go, can you drop that and just be with this breath, this breath? Any other filaments of distracting thoughts, can you just drop them, drop them? I know one of John who had an image of a knife in his mind. They were used to cut any strand of thought that began to connect. He would think of the knife cutting it, even dealing with the body, all the things that keep your body connected. Some of the things are actually physical things connecting it, but there's an awful, awful lot of mental activity that goes into connecting your sense of the body. So it's all coherent. Can you think of just cut, 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 cut through all those connections? When you cut through, when you strip things down, then the basic elements are there. And you see that the, the real problems are there in the basic elements. This is one of the reasons, as I said, why we have those chants that are so basic. Because they keep you focused on where the real issues are. 